now going over to Ed of Technology for Holden, Richard Payne. Tell me, Richard, what's the specs of a new Panasonic S1? I have one. I have one right in front of me. Fantastic. Um, so the headline specifications really are the fact it's a full-frame mirrorless compact camera, yep. and uh, it also records 4K video from the full or full-frame sensor at up to 30 frames a second. So 20, 24.2 megapixels. Uh, amazing in-body stabilization. They've got um, some heavy-duty motors to move that big sensor around, which is why the, the camera is more bulky than, than anything I've done previously, because it needs, A, to dissipate the heat from that large sensor, but also uh, to have enough room for this incredible in-body stabilization. Um, it's capable of... Um, it's capable of excellent low light performance because being full frame and also the latest generation of sensors, um, we, we've got much bigger pixels for gathering light. Mm. So you know, twice as big as GH5 uh, and, and that large photo site means that you gather more photons. So that means low light performance, but also low noise and wide dynamic range as well because you can dig more into the shadows so in all those terms this is this is a real marked um, improvement in image quality over anything else i've seen on a uh, in this sort of slr style body before how much heavier is the s1 compared to a gh5 significantly um mm. gh5 with a 12 to 35 lens is about 8 kg um this is 1.7 kg so you know it's getting on for twice as much weight mm. it's it's a a much chunkier camera but that's quite a good thing when you want some stability out of it and uh, it's necessary to dissipate the heat that means we've got uh, limitless recording we can record until the cards are full and incidentally we've got two slots on this we've got XQD as well as the um, the SDXC cards yeah. so if we use the sort of V 30 or v60 sdxc cards but we've also got xqd is, is a sony card but also there's a new cfast um compact cfast card coming which will also fit in these slots so there'll be quite a variety of media you can use in this to get the best sort of speed and best performance out of it now have you used the the, the v90s the v90 cards yes i've got a delkin v90s and panasonic v90s right. and they're excellent right so, so what are in these cards anyway yeah, but you wouldn't necessarily, for the data rates, it actually doesn't have at the moment the 400 megabits mode that you get on the GH5 and the 5S. Oh, I see. So, so a, v, uh, a V30 or a V60, but most it goes up to is 150 megabits a second. So so probably not necessary to go for those very expensive ones, unless, yes. of course, the update unlocks some higher recording options. How, how much resolution do you get in that viewfinder? Um, the EVF is an amazing 5.7 million pixels of resolution it's, oh. it's approaching what the human eye can resolve oh. so so actually um it's a bit like it's actually better than reality because you can also boost it in low light situations so there's an evf boost setting so so if you're trying to focus when it's getting really dark um you can actually see better than your eyes can through the evf that and the fact it will update it up to 120 uh, hertz so 120 times a second is it means it's an amazing thing to look through you get this amazing sharp clarity which is which looks better than looking through a mirror on a mm. on an SLR camera um in addition to this there's a there's an extra button you can see here which is v mode or hopefully yeah. you can see yeah. and that v mode it sort of moves the whole image backwards a little bit into into the viewfinder it makes it easier and more comfortable to take in the whole image in one oh, glance yeah that's just so so just by tapping that, you can sort of bring it closer and bring it back. And that's the same setting, which is in, or a similar setting, in the Vericam viewfinder, which costs £6,000 on its own. Um, and this EVF is, is one of the highest, res well, it is the highest resolution on the market at the moment. Well, absolutely stunning. Now, what about the LCD in the back? Is that better than, say, a GH5? Um, it is better. It's, it's bigger and it's brighter right, and well. brighter means it's much easier to use in um much easier to use outdoors if you're if you're not able to look through the evf and obviously yep. rather the high resolution evf the lcd is about half the resolution comparatively still very good um it has rgbw pixels so they're not just red green and blue but white as well and that gives it the extra boost uh, especially in bright light and it also it articulates not as much as a gh5 one so you can you can 
do that for shooting round corners and you can also bring it out at the bottom and out like that to to do high and low angles so so you get a, a good degree but not the selfie cam yeah. you, with that free angle screen but panasonic tell me it was a deliberate compromise in order to make it strong and this is a professional level camera this is aimed at the full pro cameras like you know like a, yes. a Canon 5d mark IV. this yeah. isn't aimed at that, that sort of lower end of the market so they built it to last so i can hold it by the screen well, and i wouldn't dare do that with a gh5 no, not with a heavy lens. so so you know it's built to last you uh a, to last in a professional world and uh, what, what, what do you get out of the bag at the moment as far as uh, 4K and HD, etc.? In, in terms of shooting, you yes. get um, you don't get at the moment without an update, and they haven't given us a price of this. There are no 10-bit uh, 422 recording yeah. modes, but there are 10-bit modes, and the pick of the bunch is probably the 100 megabit uh, H.265 mode, um, which it will record at from full 4K from the full sensor at up to 30p. So, so that gives you 10 bits, so you get the lovely gradation, you know, you don't get banding in your skies. Um, you know, it isn't 422, um, but 420 is good enough if you don't push it too far in post-production, and the 10 bit protects you a little bit if you are pushing the colors. But what we found is that actually the colors look so naturalistic and so good straight out of the camera, that it's a good idea to, to, to set it up as close as you want to in camera. There's even a new flat picture profile mode, which isn't log, but it's getting near log, and that mm. flat allows you to grade it further. But there will be a paid-for update, which Panasonic will announce the details of soon, um, which will give you 10-bit 422 internal recording and a full V-log um, capability, so you can record up the whole range of, you know, 14 and a half stops of, um, of dynamic range out of this camera, and that will move it right up into the professional sphere. Um, how good is a camera in low light? Excellent. Um, those big focus <clears throat> sights on the sensor, you know, give you a great light gathering ability, and, and coupled with the sort of size of glass you get on full frame, uh, you're able to, to gather an awful lot more photons than you can on a smaller camera system. So the low light stuff I played with, I, I had, um, my daughter had a little evening of uh, cheese and fondue and, and the, some of her friends were sitting just with their mobile phones on the couch yeah. and it was really low light, you know, not even candle light <laughs> level. And they were well lit just from a mobile phone yeah. screen, not well, the mobile phone torch, but just well, from the screen. Yeah. And that's sort of low light ability that you know Vericam gets at 5,000 ISO. So, well, so it's it's pretty astonishing what this camera can see. I think the noise reduction is a little aggressive, and I don't want to turn that down from the basic. But, but the images are very pleasing and very naturalistic. You actually reminded me some. Does have the dual ISO of the GH5S? It, it doesn't. Panasonic haven't actually given you the ISO, um, oh, the, the native ISO of this, but it doesn't. It doesn't have the dual ISO, or they certainly haven't mentioned that it's got dual ISO performance. However, you can go from about eighty to five hundred thousand, and if you use it in auto ISO mode, this is a great way of controlling exposure. Mm. So you can lock your shutter down at one hundred and eighty D or at fifty frames a second. Uh, sorry, fiftieth of a second. And then use the ISO to control your uh, your exposure, uh, as well as the aperture. Um, how does it compare with that? Something like an Eva. Now I say that, but not with the fact of the price, because obviously there's a big difference. But in the fact of something, would, would it be a good second camera for an Eva? Yeah, it, all of the Panasonic cameras match beautifully. The picture profiles will match. Um, Panasonic is well known for having very naturalistic looking images and, yeah. and very very natural colors. So you'll have no problem matching this, a GH5, a 5S and an EVA. Um, but of course, you know, it's a very different camera. So uh, if, if anything, a neutral density would be lovely if they could have built it into this, but it would have just made it much bigger. Um, but so a variable neutral density filter added to this uh, will give you the sort of light, light cutting abilities that you get with an in-body one with yeah. the Eva. Um, also, obviously, it doesn't have XLR as standard, although yeah. you can use the XLR box that works with the GH5 and the 5S. The XLR1 box will work on, on the S1. Uh, so, so there's lots of places we can go with that. Um, 
the physical size of an EVA gives it the ability to have better quality pre-amplification. You know, there's more processor power in it, so so it's it's capable of taking these large batteries, which will last for many more hours. So there's there's this doesn't replace a camera like that. It just gives us another option for for very shallow depth of field if we wanted, or very low light light gathering abilities. Now, do you think it's a, a genuine competitor to GH5? Do you think it's a different market? I, th I think it's a different market. I mean, if I had invested in in lots of micro four thirds lenses, um, then it would be very difficult to decide to buy something which is a totally different and new lens system. The, the like amount lenses, although Sigma will make adapters from Canon, mm. uh, but you'll never be able to adapt your micro four thirds glass to work on on this sort of thing. So you're looking at a, a significant investment uh, in lenses to, if you've already bought micro four thirds lenses. So this is this is designed. I have to say that the photography or the photographic side, I, I, I never really liked the photos out of the GH5 or 5S. I, they were fine. There was nothing wrong with them, but they just, they had a look which always reminded me of stills from video in a mm, way. Yes. But um, I always, always went back to my Canon 80D to get stills. But this is the first camera from Panasonic which is taking stills with a real wow factor. So um, it's a combination of their very good glass. You know, the three lenses are yes. very, very good. But um, this larger format, this this full frame sensor is giving incredibly pleasing naturalistic images, which I'm finding I have to spend a lot less time in Lightroom with to get my desired result. Yeah, I always with my Canon have gone straight into Lightroom and, you know, taken down the highlights to get some more detail in there uh, and they need some tweaking with these the jpegs are looking as good as my manipulated raw out of out of the canon i think this is a, a partly down to how fantastic this full frame sensor is but mm. also to the the image processing of, of the new new image processor which panasonic have put in this beast well, well thanks again richard and uh, i shall see you at some point in the future Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.